One of the most responsible positions in any industry is that of forklift maintenance mechanic. The required expertise, experience, and professionalism of these individuals keep the company on the move, reduce downtime and repair costs, and of course provide an extremely important function of material handling. A forklift mechanic must be knowledgeable of engineering, hydraulics, brake and engine systems, fuel systems, cooling systems, powertrain, painting, body repair, electronics, and many other components for a wide range of vehicles. It's a job for professionals. Part of each mechanic's job responsibility is safety. Safety of the vehicle being repaired or modified and personal safety. That's what this program's all about, personal safety. As professionals, you already know to wear eye and face protection, proper clothing and footwear, as well as other specialty protective equipment. Today, we want to review some of the hazardous materials every mechanic is exposed to in our business and what you can do to protect yourself. Chemicals and hazardous materials are an integral part of our lives. In the food we eat, in the clothing we wear, the automobiles we drive, and many other uses. We all recognize the benefits of chemicals, but we often neglect the hazards associated with these materials. We all use bleaches, cleaners, ammonia, and a variety of chemicals in the home. Several deaths have occurred from mixing common household bleach with ammonia-based cleaners. When mixed together, bleach and ammonia form a toxic gas called chloramine, which is a deadly gas. The moral of the story is to read and follow the directions listed on all chemical labels, whether it's at home or work. When we mention hazardous materials in the workplace, you may think of asbestos brake linings or gasoline. Yes, these are hazardous materials, but there are many more materials you use on a daily basis that can be harmful if you're not aware of their effects and how to reduce exposure. Before we begin, let's explain some basic terminology that may be unfamiliar. All manufacturers of chemicals and hazardous materials are required to provide material safety data sheets to companies using their products. These safety data sheets contain the name and addresses of the manufacturer, the catalog and trade name of the material, and additional technical information, such as boiling and melting points, vapor density, specific gravity, solubility with water, appearance, and odor characteristics and evaporation rate. It will contain fire and explosion data, how the material is reactive with other materials, and specific instructions for spills, leaks, and disposal. The data sheet provides health hazard information, special precautions, such as ventilation or protective clothing requirements. It will provide special handling and storage information and the hazardous ingredients. The most important section of the safety data sheet that affects employees is the health hazard section. Specifically, the data sheet explains what health hazards, if any, you may be exposed to when using the chemical. It also provides what action or personal protective equipment is required to reduce the exposure. Take the time to look over the information on any chemical you're using if you're not sure how to reduce the hazard or your exposure to the chemical. If you want more information on the hazardous material you're using, contact your supervisor. The company maintains these safety data sheets for your information. Let's now review some of the more mysterious terminology you've heard before but weren't quite sure of what they meant. The term flashpoint appears on combustible and flammable liquid containers. It's the lowest temperature at which a liquid gives off enough vapor to form an ignitable mixture with air and produce a flame when a source of ignition is present. Gasoline has a flashpoint of negative 45 degrees Fahrenheit. At 45 degrees and above, gas vapors can be ignited. Kerosene, which is used in many shops as a cleaning agent, has a flashpoint of 100 degrees. If you're not sure about the flashpoint of any chemical or liquid, look on the label or check your material safety data sheet for that particular chemical. 
Auto ignition temperature is the lowest temperature at which flammable gas or vapor air mixture will ignite from its own heat source or an outside source of heat. Auto ignition for kerosene is 444 degrees and gasoline is 536 degrees. When you see a label that says store in a cool place, it may be to protect the liquid or gas from auto ignition. Combustible liquids are those with flash points at or above 100 degrees. Kerosene is a combustible liquid. Flammable liquids, such as gasoline, are those with flash points below 100 degrees. Both combustible and flammable liquids can be ignited, but flammable liquids can be ignited more easily than combustibles. An explosive atmosphere is one where there is an adequate mixture of air and vapor that can be ignited. There's much more terminology and different classes of liquids, but let's stay with the basics and remember the difference between combustible and flammable liquids. A fire can be created when three elements are present. It's called a fire triangle. Fuel, oxygen, and ignition source. Remove any one of these and fire cannot be created or sustained. That's one reason there are several classes or types of fire extinguishers. Each performs a specific function for a specific type of fire. Class A extinguishers are water solutions that cool the fire until it's extinguished. You use a water type extinguisher on wood and paper fires. Carbon dioxide or CO2 are considered class B extinguishers. We use CO2 to remove oxygen to extinguish oil or flammable liquid fires. The dry chemical or class C fire extinguishers are used for electrical fires to reduce the conductivity of electricity and cover the fire until it's extinguished. If you use specialty metals such as magnesium or powdered aluminum, a class D extinguisher would be used to cover the metal fire with special powder until it's extinguished. In most shops you'll probably see an ABC type extinguisher. This means it can be used to extinguish all types of fires except the class D metals. The most important thing to remember about fire extinguishers is not to take chances. If it's safe to extinguish a fire, go ahead. If you're not sure of your safety, leave the area and let the fire department handle the fire. Always call the fire department. They should be notified even for small fires because small fires can quickly get out of hand and time is of the essence. You all know about static electricity. It can be created when you transfer flammable liquid from one container to another. Static electricity can ignite flammable liquids. When transferring flammable liquids, use a ground wire and a bonding wire to eliminate static electricity. Ground the stationary container with an electrical grounding wire to a good ground. Attach a bonding wire from the stationary container to the other container. Be sure to attach the bond wire to metal and not to a painted surface. The bonding and ground wires greatly reduce the explosion potential caused by static electricity when transferring flammable liquids. Another important safety item that's required with flammable liquids is a safety container. A can, such as shown here, is not an approved safety container. It has no spark arrestor inside the can to prevent flames from entering the can and causing an explosion. Safety containers are heavy metal containers with a spring-type lid to prevent spills, but allow the can to breathe when the pressure builds up inside the can. The flame arrestor is a mesh protector that allows the liquid to be released, but won't allow a flame to enter the container. Of course, always label the contents of the containers. Fire prevention is a major responsibility of all employees. Keeping your work area clean, Wiping up spills and grease and properly disposing of soiled shop rags can go a long way in preventing accidents and fires. It's just part of your job. As you know, mechanics are exposed to a variety of chemicals and liquids on a daily basis. You work with petroleum products, batteries, paint, welding operations, gasoline, LP gas and asbestos. These materials all require special handling safety awareness, and understanding the hazards so you can reduce the exposure. 
First, let's talk a minute about paint products. Spray paint poses the greatest health and fire hazards. Spray cans can be pressurized with propane, isobutane, or n-butane, which are flammable. Storage temperatures should not exceed 120 degrees Fahrenheit. If the can exceeds 190 degrees, internal pressure will cause the can to explode. Storage of pressurized spray cans in a safety cabinet is important as it reduces spreading of fire. Also, during a fire, you or firefighting personnel won't have to worry about exploding spray cans flying all over the area. The labels on containers provide first aid procedures and directions for use, handling, storing, and disposing of the containers. Check the labels. They may read, if ingested, do not induce vomiting, or do not breathe fumes or vapors, or use an approved respirator. Don't take chemicals for granted. New technology requires different precautions. Read and follow the directions on the label. One common mistake throughout all industries is using dust masks for spray painting. Dust masks have special purposes, but do not trap the harmful vapors of spray paint. Use a cartridge type respirator with an approved cartridge engineered for painting. Never use lead-based paints. Spray cans containing methylene chloride should not be used. There are safer substitutes you can use. Check the label before using chemicals. Use plenty of ventilation during welding and cutting operations, especially when welding or cutting painted surfaces. Highly toxic vapors from painted surfaces can be present in the air. When mixing liquid paint, do not use plastic utensils, as they can cause reactions to the chemicals in the paint. Also, never mix caustics, caustic alkalis, or oxidizing agents with paint. Be sure to read the label for directions and safety precautions. If you use trichloroethane, wear personal protective equipment for your face, eyes, and skin protection. Repeated skin contact may produce a dry, scaly dermatitis. Use plenty of ventilation, and don't use trichloroethane on aluminum. A chemical reaction between the two can become a health hazard and also ruin the aluminum. Without making a long list, let's assume all petroleum products are considered hazardous materials. Motor oil, transmission fluid, antifreeze, grease, and other lubricants or cleaners. This means they must be used, handled, stored, and disposed of in accordance with strict safety standards which are outlined in the safety data sheets or their container labels. Petroleum products in aerosol cans are the most hazardous and require special attention. Avoid the fumes and vapors by using ventilation. Avoid prolonged skin contact by washing exposed skin frequently. These vapors are heavier than air and are generally flammable. This means when you use these aerosols, the vapors will accumulate on the floor. Electrical sparks from electrical motors, welding, grinding, or other sparks can cause fires. Combustion of these products creates carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and other oxides. Some of the hydraulic oils used for refrigeration have low flash points, so fire is an increased potential. The most important part of shop safety is to know and understand the hazard potential, then use your good judgment and professional experience to reduce the hazard. It's almost like handling LP gas. You know it's flammable, it's a hazardous material. You know to wear eye and skin protection and not to breathe the vapors. And since it's flammable, you use extra precaution with sparks, open flames, and other ignition sources. Hundreds of thousands of people use it every day. Awareness and attention to the job make it safe to use. It's the same with batteries. Everyone recognizes that sulfuric acid and lead are extremely harmful. You take precautions by handling batteries with skin protection and you use eye protection. Hydrogen gas is explosive, so you eliminate spark producing conditions. We certainly haven't covered all hazardous materials in your workplace, but we have tried to impress the fact that you need to read and follow the directions on chemicals and hazardous materials. Knowing how and what to do isn't enough. 
you have to put the procedures to work and reduce your exposure. Safety awareness and action are important job responsibilities. Take time for safety. Safety matters. You matter.